we're going to be working with the following problem in real analysis. So let f of x be 0 when x is rational. So f of x is 0 when x is in the rational numbers. And it's some number 1 over a when x is irrational on the unit interval. So this a number is the first non-zero number in the decimal expansion of x. So for example, if we had the irrational number, you know, 0 0.1, 1, 3, 4, 3, and then it had, you know, maybe some other digits, then the value of a would just be 1, and uh, f of x at x, uh, at this number x, would be 1 over a, which would be 1 over 1, which is just 1. So the question is asking us to find this integral, what is uh, the value of f over 0 to 1 if it exists? So in other words, let's first guarantee that our function is integrable uh, with respect to Lebesgue integration, and then let's see if we can actually find the value. So deciding whether or not this exists is not too bad, right? Because uh, 1 over a, we know that a can be any number 1 uh, to 9 because it has to be non-zero, and that means that uh, at any point the largest value of f uh, is 1 over 1, which is 1, so f is always bounded above by 1, and f is, itself is a non-negative function, right? So on this unit interval, uh, f is bounded above by 1, which means that the integral of f with respect to the Lebesgue measure is bounded above by the integral um, over the interval 0, 1, is bounded above by the integral with respect to just 1. And that means that f is certainly a bounded integral, and that means that this function is integrable, in fact. So we can look for an exact value, and that makes sense to pursue it in that way. So let's first remind ourselves, with a kind of a smaller question, what is the integral of, what I'm trying to write here is the indicator function over the irrational, irrational numbers. So kind of a natural question to remind ourselves here is, what is the measure of the irrational numbers on the unit interval? Or uh, kind of an equivalent question might be, what is the measure of the rational numbers on the unit interval? So from basic real analysis, we might remember that the rational numbers, Q, are countable, which means that we can enumerate them. So there is some listing, Q1, Q2, Q3, which enumerates all of our rational numbers uh, when we go infinitely. They're countably infinite many. So that means we can write Q as a union of these singletons, Qn, where n goes from 1 to infinity. But if we try and measure that, right, so if we use our Lebesgue measure, which I'll denote by mu, the measure of Q, well, it's the measure of that disjoint union, n from 1 to infinity of the singletons Qn. But mu is a proper measure, in fact, it's the Lebesgue measure, so because this is a disjoint union, we know that that's just the sum n from 1 to infinity of the measure of each of the singletons. But the measure of a single point is just 0. So it's an infinite sum of zeros, which is just 0 itself. So we know that the measure of the rational numbers is 0. And we know that the measure of the irrational numbers maybe I'll write that as i, some bold i, is equal to the measure of the interval. So I'm, I'm only considering the rationals and, and irrationals on the unit interval right now because that's the relevant part to our problem, minus the measure of the rationals, right? Because the rationals and irrationals are each other's complement. And we know that this has measure 1, and the uh, rational numbers, as we showed, has measure 0. So the irrational numbers on the unit interval has measure one. Okay, so all of that mess is to say that this integral here, where we're looking at the indicator function on the irrationals, is really just measuring out one. Okay, so maybe we can test some values of f and we can see if we can find some kind of pattern. So let's test any of the values um, along our unit interval, draw it out maybe like this, 
let's test, you know, maybe some irrational number slightly larger than 0.5, right? So it has some expansion, 0.5, 1, 1, whatever. And then we know that that under F is just going to be taken to 1 over 5. Okay, but what if we picked any irrational number between 0.5 and 0.6? So maybe we pick 0.5, 9, 8, whatever. Then under F, it's still going to be 1 over 5. So any irrational number in that range is still going to be 1 over 5. And similarly, between 0.6 and 0.7, it's going to be 1 over 6, and so on and so forth. So for everything that starts out with a 0.1 or a 0.2, we kind of know immediately uh, what F is doing. But if we go back to the very beginning of the, the interval, it starts to get a little more confusing. Because if we look uh, at any number between 0 and 0.1, then we have 0, 0.0, and then we have some other number, so say uh, 1 or 3 or whatever it is, and then f takes it to uh, you know, 1 third. So what we can do is we can split up 0 to 0.1 another 10 times, right? and repeat the process that we were doing above with the larger interval. So let's measure these portions. Well, in our first step, we take, uh, we have a tenth of the unit interval, so I'll write one tenth, times F along the sum of each of these pieces. So along the, the, the nine pieces that we've already determined, it's one over one plus one over two plus one over three all the way to 1 over 9. And then the next one, when we split up the smaller interval, we get 1 one hundredth times the same sum, 1 plus 1 over 2, all the way to 1 over 9. And then we have the same problem again. We have 0 to 1 one hundredth. And we can split up this interval further into 10 pieces and then look at the sum again. So we can repeatedly do this, if say if we did it n times, then we get 10 to the n times this same quantity. Okay, so if we did this infinitely many times, which is what it would take to actually uh, divvy up this interval into as many pieces as we need, then we would get some sum, which is 1 over 10 to the n times some quantity a, which I'll just, I'll call this A. And we want to take that infinitely many times from n equals 1 to infinity. But this is a solvable sum because this is just a geometric sum. So using the geometric formula, we can get it's A over 10 over 1 minus 1 over 10, which is just A over 10 over 9 tenths which is a over nine. So then if you wanted to add up all those fractions, you could find out exactly what it is, and it turns out the number is about 0.314. So I like this problem because uh, you don't really need to know a whole lot of measure theory to solve it. You just need to kind of know, or maybe recall even, what the measure of the rational numbers is, and then kind of think critically about how you might intelligently look at f, test a couple values of f, and then you can get this nice sum which turns out to be solved fairly directly just from a minimal knowledge of the function.